welcome to your bi-weekly love reading from February 1st through the 15th, 2018. Happy Valentine's Day to all of you as well. For your reading today, I've selected the Lover's Path Tarot by Chris Waldair. I'm also going to be clarifying with the Everyday Oracle or the Vera Sibilla Italiana. And at the end of your reading, I'll be using the Rumi Oracle to pull a guidance message for you. So if that sounds good, let us go ahead and get started with your reading. All right, Leo, I do apologize. I have a throat lozenge in my mouth right now because I'm getting over a cold. So I do apologize for my voice, but well, we're just going to do the best that we can today. And Spirit, what are the most important messages and energies that you have for the sign of Leo? For all my Leos out there that may be watching. Leo suns, Leo moons, Leo risings. <clears throat> Leo's on the cusp and Venus and Leo. What do they need to know regarding their love lives? Spirit from February 1st to the 15th, 2018. This is their bi-weekly love reading. What do they need to know regarding their love lives? From February 1st through the 15th. 2018. For all my Leo suns, Leo moons, Leo risings, <clears throat> Leo's on the cusp, and those with Venus and Leo from February 1st through the 15th, 2018. Very interesting. Sometimes when the cards don't want to mix, they don't want to mix. Let's try it again. All right, at the bottom of the deck, I have the Five of Cups in reverse. Okay, so upright, we have someone here who is grieving a loss. And I read it in reverse as someone who is getting over a loss. All right, so this is coming out of a period of sadness. Now, for some people, it can indicate wallowing, crying over spilt milk. But let's see what's underneath that. We have the Eight of Arrows. Okay. So you, <clears throat> the Eight of Arrows is like the Eight of Swords in this deck. And what I'm feeling is that some of you are, maybe finally something has been revealed to you. For example, you saw the error, you saw the error of your thinking and you're getting over something that has been a pain, painful loss for you. Um... Either way, I think the Five of Cups is better in reverse, um, but there could still be some processing, getting over something that has caused you grief. Um, where previously you were stuck, you are able to move through the grieving process. So let's take a look at your cards. King of Arrows in reverse. Okay, Air Sign Energy. Libra, Gemini, Aquarius. Your challenge is the Nine of Cups. Root of the situation, we have the Two of Arrows. And this reminds me, this card reminds me of Sleeping Beauty a little bit. In your thoughts and feelings, you have the Nine of Coins. In your recent past, you have the Queen of Coins in reverse. And in your near future, you have um, temptation. It is coming up reverse. Now, temptation in this deck is the devil, similar to the devil in reverse, okay? All right, Leo, you do walk into February with the king of arrows in reverse. So this is definitely, and like I said, you could be dealing with an air sign, 
or this can be your energy. Normally I read this as the significator card, so I would read this as your energy, Leo. And I feel like either you're quitting a job, quitting a relationship, letting someone go. The King of Arrows can be excessively cruel or harsh with his words, or even overly severe with his punishments. Um, this can somewhat this can be someone who's a bit villainous. Um, this can be someone who um, can be verbally abusive, very aggressive, but to the detriment of even speaking the truth. Um, it's like excessive use of logic, excessive use of reasoning, but without empathy or without compassion. So you need to be careful with this energy. Um, now this doesn't have to be your energy. This could be someone around you. Um, your challenge is the Nine of Cups. So this is about wish fulfillment. This is about satisfaction. It's about um, basically feeling good, looking good, getting what you want. Um, it is actually the card of receiving, having their wishes granted, feeling satisfied. So there could be some some challenges around that. In fact, I'm seeing some resentment here with the, in the challenge position, jealousy, envy. Um, this could even be an extreme feeling of dissatisfaction that is causing you issues. Um, at the root of the situation, we have the two of arrows. So I kind of, like I said, this reminds me of Sleeping Beauty a little bit this card and um, <clears throat> I feel like either you or someone you're in a relationship with possibly an air sign is choosing not to like is is maybe ignoring something or is choosing not to see something okay because here we have her uh, it's kind of like she's fake sleeping all right, it's almost like, um, you know, your angels, your spirit guides, your higher powers trying to get your attention, but you're choosing not to see something for what it is. Um, it's almost like ignoring, ignoring a problem or ignoring your higher self a little bit here. Okay, um, in the past we have the queen of coin in reverse. Now, this could be Earth sign energy, Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn, or any other sign. When she's in reverse, I'm seeing a couple things here. Now, um, a feminine energy, so it could be your energy or a, another female. And the Queen of Coins can be someone who's lazy, materialistic, or in ill health. This can also be someone who is stuck doesn't know how to move forward. Um, it's not just, um, there can be mental laziness, there can also be physical laziness, but this can also be someone who has been hurt or is feeling hurt in your past. This could be someone you know. Normally, you know, she's represented by Hera, who is an earth goddess. Um, I'm feeling that there's either someone in your past or this is you. I'm actually looking at both these cards together and there's issues with communication I'm seeing and issues with feeling good, possibly with health, possibly with also just in terms of um, mental health as well. Now what you're thinking and feeling is the nine of coins and this is definitely a certain amount of freedom here. I'm just looking at the birds flying around. Um, and I'm just enjoying, 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 enjoyment. Enjoying what, you know, you have. Um, it's a love of luxury. It's, it's like having nice things. Um, but also feeling maybe rather independent as well. I'm just seeing someone here is independently wealthy or um, who feels like they finally made it, you know. But perhaps along the way, I'm seeing some cruelty. I'm seeing someone here who can be extremely harsh, extremely unfair, 
if this is you, it could be that you have air sign in your chart, Libra, Gemini, Aquarius, Sun, Moon, or Rising. But just think about, like, what is it that you're doing in order to achieve uh, this type of satisfaction? If you have to hurt people along the way, is it really worth it? Going into the near future, you have temptation in reverse. I really rather prefer this card in reverse. This is about breaking an addiction, stopping a bad habit, getting out of a codependent relationship, um, you know, saying no, denouncing the devil, saying no to temptation. It could also signify hitting rock bottom with some issue or breaking off an agreement with someone. Either way, it's much better in reverse. And I feel like what you're really doing here, Leo, when I see the sort of the way the cards are presenting themselves is you may be quitting a bad habit or getting, um, deciding to stop overindulging in some manner in your life. <coughs> there could be something that you were doing in the past that was affecting your health. And I'm actually seeing going into the future that you're going to be quitting something. Um, that could be also having to do with negative relationships, uh, getting rid of people that are not getting rid of people. I'm um, saying no to people that are uh, not good for you. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and clarify some of these cards now that we have time. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to start with the center card here. Who is this King of Arrows in reverse? What is this King of Arrows doing in Leo's reading? Who is this King of Arrows in reverse? Okay, we have ostentation, vanity, and arrogance. Okay, so there's some type of arrogance, vanity, or showing off here going on in the past. I'm seeing a married woman specifically, or respect or attraction toward the mother of a family. Okay. Why is this King of Arrows in reverse? Ooh. We have a woman who acts secretly. Now, if you notice, this looks to be the same woman because we have a woman wearing the blue dress with the red. And the only difference is that here she's wearing like a cape and a mask. So, Leo, if this is you, I'm seeing some, some possibly some bad behavior coming from you in February. Um, likely, I'm seeing either you're the married woman or you are attracted to a married woman, um, if you're a man watching this. But I'm seeing someone who's being rather vain, ostentatious, uh... Not the best characteristics here, and also with the enemy, it could just be saying you are being your own worst enemy at this time. You're not really helping yourself at all. Um, why is this two of arrows here? In Leo's reading, what is this? Why is this two of arrows in Leo's reading? What is the meaning of the two of arrows here? Why is this two of arrows here? We have the gratification achieved after a long time. So finally getting what you want. So you, you got something that you wanted for a long time. 
but I still feel like <clears throat> there's a bit of a stalemate going on here. Money, gain investments, inheritance, I just heard money is the root of all evil. You finally got something that you wanted. Maybe you finally got some money. Man of high society. The Lord. I do see a man attached to the situation. Um... It's interesting because uh, the Lord is someone, he's coming up as the King of Hearts, who's very well respected, who um, obviously, obviously he's dressed very well, uh, but you know, like the angel here is trying to get her attention, it's kind of telling me that there's something not quite right about this situation. Because once you once this person gets the money that you know that they wanted, they've always wanted this, they finally got it. Now they're looking good, dressing good, feeling good. What is next? You know? What is next? There seems to be some issues around gratification satisfaction, um, wish fulfillment here. <clears throat> yeah, at the bottom of the deck I had uh, the other enemy card come up. Um, <clears throat> I see a reunion coming up in the future. This is a romantic encounter or job offer. But without the temptation without the possible strings attached here. We have the prigione. <clears throat> Someone feels like they can't act or move. They feel constrained. Perhaps <clears throat> feeling like a prisoner of your own circumstances. And we have the maid. Which is basically just someone who is a friend here. It just talks about going about your business. But, um... I am seeing someone that feels a bit like a prisoner. Here, maybe even in a relationship. Um... Or it could be that, Leo, you're in a relationship with someone. You are reuniting with someone, getting back together with someone. And um, you freed yourself. You freed yourself from something, but this person is still feeling chained to you. Because you have the nine of coins here in your thoughts and feelings. You've let go of someone here, but maybe they still feel... Like, they can't let you go. Right? I do see a reunion coming up in your future. It does look like a romantic encounter. Or could be a job offer. But I feel like you're going to... <clears throat> potentially turn them down. Okay? So that you can move forward. Alright, Leo. I'm going to go ahead and pull your oracle message. <clears throat> Spirit, what does Leo need to know? Please help guide them on their high spiritual path in love and in light. 
Layla. You have Layla. Beautiful. And um, <clears throat> this is card 34. There is a message here for you, Leo. If you'd like to follow along, along, you can Google the card, which is called Layla, number 34. Um, you should be able to find them online. You just Google the name of the card and the Rumi Oracle. This is the book that I'm reading from today. So there's going to be a poem, and then there's some text after that. <clears throat> I really apologize for my voice today. It must sound horrible, but... Okay. Here's the poem. It says, put aside your clever schemes. Oh, lover, be mindless. Become mad. Dive into the heart of the flame. Become fearless. Be like a moth. Turn away from the self and tear down the house. <clears throat> then come and dwell in the house of love. Be a lover. Live with lovers. Clean your chest from all hostility. <clears throat> Wash it seven times. Then fill it with the wine of love. Be a chalice for love. Be a chalice. You must be all love to be worthy of the beloved. When going to the gathering of drunks, be a drunk. Become drunk. Your thought takes a course, dragging you in its wake. Move beyond thought. Let your heart lead. Be the leader. When the grace of love is revealed, be a mirror to reflect it. When the beloved's hair is loosened, brush it like a comb. Be a comb. Rumi. How I long for my thoughts to no longer make any sense to me. Then I can be rid of them, like noisy house guests who have overstayed their welcome. Oh, the peace when they finally go. Their incessant chatter brings me no comfort. I crave the silence of you. Will you let me hear it? Will you run through the noisy house of my mind with your great muddy feet so that I can focus on something other than my mind for a while? Maybe you can make <clears throat> such a mess that I shall give up my plans and attempts at order completely. Just give in for a change. It's time for that. To give up my ridiculous fantasies of perfection, useless, noisy, irritating, demanding, and yet deadening perfection. I'd rather just be alive. I want to plant my head in the earth in the same mud that sticks to your feet and breathe in her rich soil smell. I want to feel her heart beating in the quiet movements of the roots of the plants as they stretch and grab and stop my ears with her fertile dirt. Finally gaining peace from the constant infernal racket of thoughts no longer wanted. <clears throat> oh beloved, how you are to be envied. You are being given the gift of no self, no noise, no sense. The great beloved truly wants you to be closer than ever to the wild universal heart. In that field of love, every electronic device goes haywire. Systems collapse. Worlds collide and great stars are born from the chaos. But the real you will sense none of this. You'll be staring at your beloved, so intoxicated by love, your tongue will loll out of your mouth and you'll drool like a bloodhound. And you won't care a hoot, neither will the great beloved. <clears throat> Such will the passion of your reunion be, that the only thing to matter will be the one great love exploding inside your being. So who cares if you have no idea what day it is, what was your job supposed to be again, or how to make conversation, let alone intelligent conversation, at the dinner table. Ah well, you shall not be yourself anymore. You shall not be so appropriate or sociable. Who understands crazy words that fall out of your mouth, unchecked by logic or rationality? I do. I know the beloved too. I am under that same loving spell. I, like you, have no I anymore. I, like you, am so crazy with love that I care not for things making sense anymore. 
I, like you, long for my night of love with the great beloved, that ends me forever and renders me only and ever the lover of the great beloved. I call that night forward from my love-crazed heart, as do you, the night of destiny. Let us run together and pound on the bedroom door of the great beloved. There is no shame. There is nothing else worth holding on to. Let us go now and throw ourselves upon the good will of the Creator. Our hair shall be messy and mingle with the curving galaxy, and the planets shall grow rings around them, becoming the many eyes of the Great Beloved, delightfully bearing witness to our loving, passionate surrender. This oracle brings you a message. You are moving through a period of not knowing, of time in the great void or womb of the Divine Mother. It is in this place the seed can crack open and take root. This cannot happen in the light where all is seen and recognized. It must happen under the cover of darkness, where only trust can assure one of success. This is the way of nature, the way of life, and it must be honored. This oracle brings you ancient wisdom. It guides you not to fear the darkness, but to enter into it willingly. It is not for you to become lost, but to find your way. This oracle is saying that in the darkness, there is the path. Do not turn away from it. Let it be. Be with the lack of knowing. When people ask of you so many questions and demand sensible answers to support their notion of reality, do not bow to such unworthiness and fear. Know that their minds may be fearful for your safety and their own lest your divine madness be contagious, but that their fear is nothing to you, nothing at all. It is not even anything to them, but they just don't know that yet. Under the sacred black cloak of night, the Divine Mother, the Goddess, she who transfigures from darkness into the, into the light, has invited you into her chamber. In that place you shall experience annihilation, but only that of which is untrue, that of which will ho would hold you back, dampen your spirit or prevent you from bursting into full aliveness. For that which is true is already seated deep in her womb and is preparing to be born strong and with good, powerful legs. So when it is time, it will leap like a wild creature, all instinct and intuition into the morning light. For this moment, however, there is darkness and that is essential for the appearance so imminent beloved of the light on its way. This oracle brings you guidance. If you find yourself to be sad, to be grieving, whether you know for what or not, or even depressed or struggling, feeling as though you are being pulled down, do not fight. Bear witness instead. Allow what is taking place to take place. Allow what is happening to happen. You shall find a joy in allowing the interplay of darkness and the light to take place according to a greater unfolding rhythm of your own divine growth process. Sacred Honoring Ritual Sit in a dark and quiet place if possible. Say aloud, I honor the darkness that serves the all-loving light. Through the grace of Rumi and the Divine Mother, I am blessed with growth of my soul into life. Even within the darkest of places, the Divine Beloved dwells with unfailing generosity and compassion. In my surrender I am held, and in my darkness the seed of new life takes root. So be it. Rest for as long as feels good you have completed your honoring ritual. Beautiful message, Leo. And I really feel like this is a card asking you to let your heart lead because in here it says move beyond thought okay with the grace of love is revealed when the grace of love is revealed be a mirror to reflect it um, Things may not make sense in February, and uh, you may not have all the answers, but um, 
they are asking you to be at peace with what is and let your heart move you forward from this point forward. Not your mind, your heart. Okay? Intriguing cards, intriguing reading. Um, let me know if you resonate below in the comments. Also, if you like this reading, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you very much. Uh, if you didn't like this reading, give it a thumbs down as well. And um, if you'd like to book a private reading, I am available to do those. Click below in the description. You'll see my website and information there. Sending you off with much love and light. Take care.